Hi, this is 1.3 vector equations, and we are in linear algebra. Okay, so first of all, we're going to see some notation coming our way, so we've got to read these and figure out what these things mean. We got R2. R2 is just real dimensional two space. And so it's all the real numbers in two dimensional space. R3, three space, and Rn is n space. And so if we see a vector in Rn, that can be represented with a column vector of dimension n by 1. So remember, a column vector is up and down like this. And so this would be your n, in this case 3, by a 1. Okay? And we're not going to go into too many de details with vectors yet. There's a full unit on it later, but we're going to get you a start on it right now. So if we have a vector u, like this, we can write it in a column vector, 3, 2, negative 1. So this would be in 3 space, and then vector v would be 2, negative 1, 4. Notice the u and v are bold. What we do in multivariables, we put the little arrows over the top uh, for this, and we then we, we write it with these kind of brackets. Well, now we're going to do it in a column for u and v. So let's try this. We want to find u minus v for u and v here. So all we do is take the respective components and go ahead and subtract them. So this would be 3 minus 2, 2 minus negative 1, and then negative 1 minus 4. So this is going to be equal to 1, 3, 5, negative 5. Okay, so that's going to be the vector for that. Then if I go ahead and find 3u, so I'm going to do this problem now. 3u is just taking 3 and multiplying it by each one of the respective uh, components in u. So then this would be 9 and then 6, and then negative 3. So I just multiplied that all by what I needed, by the 3. And then if I do 4v, so then I get 8, negative 4, and then 16. Now I could have multiplied that by negative 4 and then added the two vectors together, but I'm going to just subtract these now. So I'm going to get 9, 6, negative 3, and I'm going to subtract my 8, negative 4, positive 16. So my 3 u minus 4 v is going to be equal to this vector right here, 1, 10, negative 19. So in a more formal situation with R2, we can consider a rectangular coordinate system in a plane. Because each point is determined by an ordered pair of numbers, we can identify the geometric point with the column vector a, b like this. And so we may regard R2 as a set of all points in the plane. So if we use u and v in R2, then if we do u plus v, this should have the vectors or, or bold, to the fourth vertex of the parallelogram for which the vertices are u, 0, and v. So this is the tip to tail thing. So if I put the u here, I can take this vector, slide it up here, and add the two together, which is the resultant here of u plus v. And that's the same as just adding the respective components together. So these now are the properties that hold in Rn for the vectors. So we have the commutative property, associative property, the identity for addition, and then we have the uh, ability to take u and then subtract u off of it and then get the zero vector. The distributive property, and distributed the other way. These are the constants, constant multiples times a vector, and then we can distribute that out if we want. This is a constant times the sum of two vectors, and then we can get that. And then we just have another associative property of multiplication, and then we have the multiplicative identity. So now we do linear combinations. Given vectors in our n and given scalars, the vector y defined by taking the scalar times a vector plus the, all the respective ones is called a linear combination of v1, comma, da, 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 vp with weights c1 through cp. Now you just did this, if you did the pixel problem, you just did a linear combination to make your picture disappear or reappear. That was a linear combination that you were doing then the weights in the linear combination can be any real numbers, including zero. Okay, so let's look at this example. We have these three vectors, a1, a2, and then b. 
Determine whether B can be generated as a linear combination of A1 and A2. That is, determine whether weights x1, x2 exist such that this equation will hold true. And then if the vector equation has a solution, find it. So what's going to happen is that we're just going to represent this in many different ways, but it's going to be the same exact thing. And we, our goal is to try to get it to be an augmented matrix. So we have these vectors here. Then we can put it into an equation like this. So we can rewrite x1 because that's going to be a scalar, but it's a vector of all these things here. And then x2 times all these respective components, and then that's equal to my b. And so now I can set this up by taking the a x1 and multiplying it in, and I'm going to get this. x2 multiplied in is going to get this, and then that's still my b vector. So I can represent it this way, this way. I can represent it this way. So I use the multiplicative property or the scalar property for that one right here to get to here. And now I can take the two vectors and add them together and get to here. And then we know that this overall is the augmented matrix that's right here. So now we can go ahead and solve this as we've done before. If we get 0 equals 4, yeah, we're going to get no solutions. If we get 0 equals 0, it's going to be infinite num infinitely many solutions. And then we also have a possibility that we get one solution. Go ahead and try to solve this one and see what you get and pause this and then come back and see what, where we're at. So straight away, you probably saw some funny business here. You can see that x2 is going to be equal to 2. Then you could go substitute it into this equation and solve it or you can get it into reduced row echelon form and then solve and you get x1 is equal to 3 and x2 is equal to 2. If you plug those back in to each one of these equations, you should see that they do work. So then that does mean that if I take the 3 and plug it in for x1 and the 2 in for x2, this equation right here is going to be satisfied for us. So yes, we get one solution for this situation. We just solve for x. And realize that this is a linear combination to get to this vector. That's what we've done. Last thing we need to talk about is the definition for the span. I try to write this up in kind of regular terms, but I don't know if I did a very good job. But if I'm in R2 or R3, that just means that any vector that we have, it will span the length of any scalar multiple. It's kind of like the vector. I didn't write this right, but it's kind of like the vector is just on the line that it's on. And so then the line that's represented there is the span of that particular vector. And then here, two vectors in R3 will span their plane created by two vectors. So we have two vectors and they make a plane. And the two vectors can't be multiples of each other. So a more formal definition we have here, we got the let V be a non-zero vector in R3. Then span V, so that's just one vector, is the set of all scalar multiples of V, which is the set of points on the line in R3 through V and the zero vector. So if I have this vector V, so I go from here to here, the span of it is going to be the line that it occurs on. So it's going to go on forever like that. So that's the span. And then if I have two vectors, if u and v are non-zero vectors in R3, with v not a multiple of u, then span uv is the plane in R3 that contains u, v, and the zero vector. In particular, span uv contains the line in R3 through u and zero, and the line through v and zero. So in other words, this is u, and this is the line that u is on. This is v, and this is the line that v is on. And so the vector, I'm sorry, the plane that's created by these two spans is going to be the span of those two vectors. We'll talk about this a little bit more in class. I gotta try to make something up for you to practice this. All right. In this assignment, you're gonna be do practice one through three. And then we're going to try linear combinations a little bit graphically and then gift 1 through 31 odd. Hey, thanks for listening. Have a great day.